whatever hey hi hello welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Jess and as you can tell I'm gonna be talking about 10 books that I think are five stars and your opinions don't matter now that sounds really mad <laughs> that sounds bad and they and they do matter if you also agree with me and the books are five stars that's when they matter if you think anything less you are incorrect and so I will not be considering your opinion right uh so I'm going to show you those 10 books right meow after we thank today's sponsor. Okay, don't act brand new. Y'all know who Surfshark is. I, they've been down with me since day one. Okay, if you're new here, maybe you don't know Surfshark is a virtual private network or VPN that can protect yo um, whether you're at home or if you're out, you're on public Wi-Fi, which can be really sketchy. If you want to watch different programs in different countries that aren't available there, if you just want to hide your location, your IP address, you need a VPN, a virtual private network. And Surfshark is amazing. Like I said, you can use it to view other programs, to hide your IP address, to protect your information. You can get alerts on if your email has been hacked, if your password was exposed, if your credit card is in danger. Surfshark got your back like chiropractic and because Surfshark rocking with me like I'm rocking with them and they rocking with you because I'm rocking with you we got you a, a code okay <laughs> so which is my last name Owens O-W-E-N-S will save you 80% off and three months free it's kind of wild I don't get it but don't ask questions just do it the link is in the description protect your stuff watch other things and you can also help support my channel <laughs> so again code is owens o-w-e-n-s for 80 percent off and three months free <laughs> thank you to surf sharp for sponsoring this video i don't know if you can hear the thunder but it's thundering real nice outside i'm like dang i wish i was napping but i'm gonna film this video first priorities these are not in order so no one through ten these are just ten of many books that I think are perfect and I will not hear otherwise. I will not watch your video, I will not read your review. I will not stand for your slander. You say these books are five stars and I'm just gonna go with how they are in this pile. Starting with Nora K. Jemison, The Fifth Season. This is the first of the Broken Earth trilogy and it is my favorite. I have read the whole thing. It is a series I would like to get back to and reread because I feel like I did miss so much. But this book, it's just incredible and I think it's because it was so different when I read it the second person uh just the, even the concept where this this world is just going through so much climate and environment wise and uh this could be the end this fifth season might be the final season and the, the way it's told in our characters the twist towards the end I was just like gobsmacked is that a correct use of this word so this will be my uh this currently is my favorite of the trilogy i think it's perfect if you don't again you're incorrect and i think nk jemison has a distinct writing style it does not mean that all of her books read the same it's just you you're like mm, yes this is jemison and so of the work that i've read of hers thus far this has been my favorite this trilogy and of course this book so don't be intimidated just read it and know that it's a five star. I picked up the third one in this series, but all of them. And this is Arab Navron. This is by Michael J. Sullivan. Now I think he pronounces it like Raira. I always add it in Ra, wait, Ra, whatever. I always said Raira. I'm gonna I'm say it, I'm gonna say it. Royce and Hadrian, I love them so much. So this whole series, uh, this is the Revelations. There's three volumes, but there's two books in each. So six books. And uh, maybe the first time I read the first one, I gave it four stars, but that was incorrect. I reread it. I was like, wait, <laughs> this is five. And so are all of the other books. It's just such a good time. It is very classic fantasy, white dudes. You've got dwarves, you've got elves, you've got a wizard, a princess, a quest. Royce is very much like I will stab you first and maybe ask questions later and Hadrian is very chivalrous and wants to think that there's good in everyone and they're a pair of thieves and they take all of these jobs usually from rich royal people because you know they're trifling um, and you just get to see them go on these 
adventures together but in this series it ties into a larger plot of something that's going on with the kingdom. I recently started the prequel series which is the Red Area Chronicles and that is really showing them how they got it how they got it how they got started working together and I've read the first two of those and loving those also. This is just such good character work even if you don't think the plot is that exciting. Royce and Hadrian are such amazingly written characters are hilarious. This bromance is incredible. And there's also a lot of other great characters in here. So you should read these. The first one is Theft of Sorts. Uh, the, like again, this is the third one, but so good. Now this next one, woo! A Monster Calls. This is written by Patrick Ness. Um, this was inspired by uh, his friend who passed away. And uh, this story is so fucking sad. <laughs> Uh, and also the movie. Like I read the book and I watched the movie, which I'm usually disappointed, but I was just bawling in both. This story is so interesting and it's about a young boy who's going through grief, um, about to lose his mother. But the way, I guess you can say like metaphors or whatever, or how it's written, I don't know. I'm not a freaking English professor. With the monster is, you know, it doesn't take long to figure out what this is symbolizing. But I just think the way it was told, I just anytime I see it on my show, I'm just like, mm. like I get choked up. I just thought it was really well done. And I have no complaints about it. And if you said, well, it was shut up, you're wrong. Thank you come again. <sighs> okay, I'm not even gonna do this at the end because y'all should know this is on the list. Hello, babble. Hello, this is Babel or the Necessity of Violence, an arcane history of the Oxford Translators Revolution by R.F. Kuang. Y'all should know this. Don't be surprised. Now, this is a book that I acknowledge is not for everyone. There are some books where I'm like, yeah, everyone should like that book. This is one I acknowledge isn't for everyone. So if you, this is very literary historical fantasy. If that does not sound good to you, do not read this. If you start reading it, you're like, oh, it's boring. There's footnotes. You're not interested in that. You're not interested in language and translation. Do not read this. Because if you read it and you're like, well, I didn't like shush, wrong, false, get out of here. Do not pass go. This is brilliant. This was everything I wanted and more. We are following four students who are in a cohort together at their first year um, at Oxford and they're in translation. And you just learn so much about language. And like, obviously I knew that translation was never literal and in word to word, but you really get to see that in action and how that ties into the magic system, which I think is really unique. And it's not a like fantasy heavy book. It is very first literary and then historical, and then there's fantastical elements, but it's also not magical realism. I think it's just for a very specific person who really is very interested in the, st the story like a revolution story but that we're getting told through students who are uh, mostly black and brown but you do have one white one who are privileged enough to come to this program and not be in their native countries maybe suffering under the foot of colonialism as bad as them you know they're still experiencing certain things in England but I don't know oh it just perfect so be quiet if you think otherwise because I I know all I am correct and you're wrong. Rage Cat by P. Jelly Clark. This is like the perfect novella. It is so short but it is so perfect. He hits every every word every sentence there is nothing wasted in this book because it is perfect it's set in like the 1920s and we have this group of black women who are monster hunters because in this world the dudes, the whites and the KKK are like actually monsters, like woogity booty monsters, like m creepy, nasty monsters. I will say there's a little bit of like body horror in this um, when talking about these monsters, Ooh, but it's just excellent. Like it is something that when you finish it, you're like, dang, I wanted more, but it also didn't need more. Like the, the story was told perfectly. It ended like you didn't need more, but you wanted it to continue, which I think is an excellent sign of a book. Either that or you're like, this was the perfect length. And no, yeah, if you read something and you're like, oh my God, this wrapped up so well, this is everything I needed um, and wanted, but actually I'll take more if you will have me. And so this is my favorite of his work that I've read so far. Um, 
And so if you try to argue that it was too short or something, you know what? Argue with your mom, but don't argue with me. Vida Nostra. So this was written by Sergey and Maria Diachenko. Sergey sadly passed away recently. I believe it was this year, if not the end of last year. So RIP. But they were a uh, couple that wrote books. I can never for the life of me get it correct. If they were Ukrainian and their books were written, translated to Russian and then translated to English, or if they were I'm so sorry. I have tried to understand it and I keep getting it wrong. Just know that this is translated into English, Obby. The second one was just recently translated this year. I can't remember what it's called. I haven't gotten to it yet, but this was like, when people are saying, oh, have you read The Secret History? If you love Dark Academia, that's the book you should read. False. This, this, this is the book you should read. This is so fucking amazing. It's like dark. <laughs> because these students are not choosing to go to this school they have to and if you're like no nah, I don't want to go there <laughs> homie's like okay try that again oh you remember your grandma do you love her do you want her to live okay report to school and it's also it addresses like the stressors and like the overworking of students at university but also takes it to another level because it's like yeah yeah sure that sucks but I don't care because if you do not do all of your work if you do not do well I'm gonna hurt someone you love so very unique there and they do have like regular classes like English and everything but then they have like metaphysical classes and that's where it gets to where I cannot fucking explain to you what was going on except that I was just like <gasps> the whole time and then we got to the end and I really do think that my brain melted because I was like and I need to reread this so I can go into the next one but this to me is just like a masterpiece so if you don't think that seek help Ooh, a girl in the tower by Catherine Arden now I think it's rare for a middle book to be a five-star read but that is what happened in this case this is the book after the bear and the nightingale the third one is the winter of the witch but yes we have here what I call the perfect middle book if you do not agree I would like you to listen to me this book from the the first fucking word the first goddamn paragraph the first chapter we were on a ride until the very end this picks up where the first one leaves off and it doesn't do that like slow dragging your feet through the mud to get to the next location like a lot of middle books will have information we need but it's told so dryly and like you're like oh my god get it over with this kept me on the edge of my seat hooked stressed pressed um yeah i mm. Everything that was happening inside the tower, all the politics, the religion, the, the things we learned because the Bear and the Nightingale I still love it. Not as much as this one. It definitely is a slower build and we're like learning some of the like Russian fairy tales and the things that are inspiring the story. But this is like action from start to finish. So it's a perfect book, perfect middle book. It would be if I tried to make a video about best middle books in a series, it'd probably be really very hard because it's rare. But this showed out. Yeah, she did. Z -z -z -z. Now we have a book at the end of a series, The Empire of Gold by Shannon Chakraborty. This is the third and final book in uh, the Dave Abad trilogy, which I love. <laughs> Tara. Anyway, I think a lot of people have mixed opinions on how this series ended, but I for one thought it was perfect. I am very critical of long books. This is like probably almost 700 pages. And I think that this earned its length, as Mara would say. I needed every fucking piece of this. I needed every storyline. I needed every extra question, every answer, every world we, or like every place we visited. I needed it all. I had so many emotions. I was stressed. I was happy. I was sad. I was panicking. I cried. And was it the ending that I personally would want in relation to people? No, but it is an ending that makes sense. And it's not just to cater to your audience. This is what should have happened. Totally, it was not wrapped up in this neat little bow, but it also wasn't just like left open with a lot of questions. Now there is room for her to continue if she wanted to do like some companion series or something, um, which I think is a, a really, I love when that is done too. Like I said earlier, when it, it you finish it and you're like, this was perfect, this was enough, but I would like more. And she did leave it I feel like it's more organic the way she left it that she could do like 
Um, she did do the short, the short stories, which I need to read, but she also could do like another companion novel and I would love that. I love this trilogy so fucking much. Um, it's one of my favorites. <sighs> I don't say that lightly, one of my favorite series. And uh, if you were like, this was too long, I didn't wanna shh, no one cares. Jade City. Are you surprised to see this on here? You shouldn't be. This is by Fonda Lee. This is the first in a trilogy, The Greenbone Saga. The second one is Jade War. The third is Jade Legacy. Now, if you have been watching me for some time, you know that my favorite is Jade, Jade City. My second is Jade War and then Jade Legacy. Very sad for me. Everyone, their mama, their cousin, their their uh, a granny, um, their third cousin twice removed, loved Jade Legacy and I am in the minority that I did not love it and I'm so y'all can't understand the sadness that I have that I did not love it but anyway we're not here to talk about that we're here to talk about Jade City on my honor on my Jade this oh. Oh, okay people were hyping about this book hyping about this book is that even a word whatever and I was like whatever so let me borrow it from the library and I fell in love I fell in love with Hilo I love the Hilo, I fell in love with it. and um, I love the violence in this. This is in like a Japanese inspired world on this island where uh, there are two main clans uh, that fight against each other. We have the No Peak clan and we have the Mountain clan and it's been going on for, it's just like a long held feud. And you know, they're always crossing over on each other's territories, people dying. And a lot of, there are conflicting feelings about Hilo because some people are like, oh my God, he's so, he's just too much, he's terrible. And actually, actually, actually not. You're actually incorrect, Hilo is perfect in these first two books uh I just love again I love the violence I love how he rationalizes things I'm like yeah I understand you know someone had to die I get it the way the what Fonda threw in here in the middle of the story I was like bitch I know you didn't and she did I loved all the relationships between the clan members and well Shay let's not talk about it but and I just uh I, this world this felt real to me like it felt like I could envision it never been to Japan obviously this isn't exactly Japan but I I felt like I could envision it I felt like when she was talking about them just like walking down this place with a, some you know there's a lantern hanging outside I felt like I was there and I was sitting eavesdropping uh listening to Hilo talk to his lantern men and actually that would never be something because I would never try to eavesdrop on Hilo but these characters to me felt real I still think about them even if I didn't love the conclusion to the series I will always love this book and Jade War I will definitely reread re the entire series at some point but yeah this was perfect thank you Fonda last but not least is my girl Amari <laughs> Are you surprised? Let's not be. This is by my cousin, B.B. Alston. He is not my cousin. I like to call him internet cousin like Brie does. B.B. Alston, this book. Mm -mm -mm. This is the first in a middle grade. I don't know if it is going to be a trilogy. I think it is, but the first two books are out. Have not read the second one. Mind your business. This was just like, this reinvigorated, renewed my love for middle grade. Um, or maybe I'm saying renewed, did I have? I don't know how I felt in the beginning, but this, I was like, God damn, this what they're writing out here? This is the wizard, witch, magical story that I've been waiting on with a black girl. And I just loved it. I loved it so much. This is not a school, this is like a summer program camp that she goes to. And she of course didn't know she was magical, didn't know her brother was magical, but she finds out her brother was magical. And also that we learn he has gone missing and she has not given up hope that he is alive and she is really on a mission to find him. That leads her here. She's doing some other detective work while she's there while also learning her powers, learning who she can trust and who she can't. I just thought, so good entire thing I'm so scared about the next one again middle books ah! and I feel like I've heard people were either like she's going through the whole time or it ends in a cliffhanger or both and like I can't deal with that stress right now but this is such a good book I think all kids teens adults would love this but especially if you're targeting a middle grade this is just chef's kiss incredible so proud of cousin BB Alston he's from South Carolina so we have to be tangentially related right possibly anyway that was the last one I think that was 10 
I'm not a math girly, so I can't be trusted. All of those books, if you leave anything in the comments saying why they were less than five stars, I will block you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I know we all have those books where you're like, this is my absolute favorite. I don't wanna hear anything you're saying. So tell me a couple of books that you feel that way about that <laughs> you can write a dissertation on it. I'm not listening. I don't hear you, you are <laughs> you are incorrect. Those are just some of mine. I'm sure I can make another 10, maybe sometime in the future, but these are just some I hold near and dear to my heart. Anytime I see them on the shelf, I'm just like, oh, or oh, you know, just depending. Um, and of course, I think you should read all of them. But anyway, share your faves down there. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Again, link down in the description. And I hope you all stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.